Hello and welcome everyone. So glad to have all of you here, seeing a lot of familiar faces and seeing a lot of new faces. So this is gonna be a fun conversation. Uh, looks like some of you are coaches and doing continuing education and some of you are new to the coaching space. Uh, saw some questions ahead of time, so we're gonna work hard to make sure we address those. And of course, throughout this quick conversation, we invite additional questions. You can do that one of two ways. One is to raise your hand and I can unmute you individually so you can come in live and ask your question. And then the other, of course, is to put it in the question panel and we can uh, monitor that and answer those as we go. So we have a fast 30 minutes for our conversation. What are we gonna talk about here? We are going to, number one, talk about what is meaningful change. We want a definition for that. And we also want a definition for coaching. So then moving into exploring how does coaching create meaningful change. And one of the really fun questions that came in ahead of time is from somebody that is trained in change management and curious how that works with coaching. And then on the other side of it, we have people that are trained in coaching and wondering about applying that with the change. So it's, it's going to be a great way to link these. We will talk about also enhancing your results uh, during that process give you some tips and techniques and some resources. So we're starting with the definition of meaningful change. And as I often do, I simply went online and looked it up and saw what I could find. So meaningful uh, in the dictionary. Oh, I do have a hand up right away. Let me go ahead and uh, unmute and take that question. Hi, Deborah, how are you? Uh, Deborah, I've got you live on this end. I'm not hearing you. And it may be that your mic volume is off or it may be you're on a computer that doesn't have a mic built in. Okay, unfortunately, Deborah, since I can't hear you, I'm gonna ask you to uh, type in in the question panel. And if you figure out your mic system and wanna come in again in a little bit, raise your hand again and, and we'll do that. So in the meantime, uh, Meaningful. What does it mean? So having meaning, I thought it was funny they included the word in the definition. Uh, it, so if I skip over that, having function or purpose. Uh, and then it came back to meaningful. <laughs> How do you use the word in the definition? So a change that has significance is a way to build on that definition or a uh, a conversation that has significance. Uh, showing or conveying Again, it gave the word meaning, uh, and they gave the example, especially without words, a meaningful glance. Uh, change, let's look at that. To cause to be different, to give a completely different form or appearance, uh, to transform. Uh, for example, changing the yard into a garden is a transformation, and then Meaningful change, what is that? I'm gonna put out there, and this is just coming from me after looking at what I found, to purposely make different. Uh, we're doing that by choice. Uh, so I got the uh, type question of, will we share the slides afterwards? What I will do afterwards is send all the participants a link to the recording on the YouTube uh, so that you can go in and view it again. So thanks for that question. All right, so if meaningful change is to purposely make different, what's coaching? Those of you who are coaches are familiar with this definition. For those of you who aren't, coaching is a professional service that's unique in that uh, typically when you hire a professional, you hire them for their subject matter expertise, whereas a coach, you hire them for their process expertise, and they're truly a partner. So instead of them being the expert, they're there as, as a partner, as an equal in that process. And so what is coaching? This definition comes from the International Coach Federation. It is a strategic partnership in which the coach empowers the client truly 
puts the client in charge in the driver's seat. So the client is the one who clarifies their goals, creates their own action plans and moves past obstacles. So they achieve what they want. When you talk about applying coaching in the space of change, here's the significance of that ownership and therefore follow through because when that individual who's going to create the change owns creating the change, you do get the follow through and that's a powerful impact. Of course, we'll keep building on this very specifically. What does a coach do in terms of the change? Well, coaching really is about creating meaningful change. ICF talks about that. The coach partners with the client to define what they want, explore their opportunities, consider their challenges, list their resources, develop their strategies, plan their action steps, be accountable to follow through, and then to acknowledge their own progress and success. And yes, a coach is also an accountability partner. Now, when you think about creating change, I'm going to give you some examples of how the whole flow, the process of what we do as coaches overlaps with creating change. Engaging with a coach is done because you want to change something. So let's get specific with that. Again, back to some online research and Inc. Dot com has this. If you're going to create change, you paint the picture. For those of you that have done coach training, I'm sure this sounds familiar. Uh, we paint the picture with the client. It's knowing not just what, but why and how. So if I can phrase that in coaching language, knowing both the what and the why and the how, keeping people in mind. Uh, this is significant. Uh, we see things happen in organizations where there's a lot of collateral damage, if you will. <laughs> and so it's important to keep people in mind. Communicate with transparency. Emphasize the benefits of the change. Set outcomes and goals. Okay, so again, as you consider, we've got these steps in change and think about what we do in coaching. In coaching, when you're having the conversation with the client, you're having them paint the picture, what it is they want. You're exploring both the what they want and the why and how, uh, what's behind wanting that and the reasons, the motivations for it and how do they see that happening. You are talking with them about the people that are involved in that. The communication process is transparent. You're asking the client their benefits, uh, and so they own those. It's an internal motivator and driver. You're working with them as far as setting outcomes and goals. You're grooming change agents. Now, in a coaching relationship, sometimes that change agent truly is the client, and coaching is an advanced development for advanced results, and so it's grooming them as their own change agent. At the same time, if the individual you're working with in a coaching relationship is heading change in an organization, you're supporting them in their process for grooming people inside their organization. Uh, I love this one. Use training wheels. <laughs> so testing things, getting small wins and building on that. Checking in regularly. Of course, that's what we're there doing as a coach making it happen, keeping up the momentum, and then of course leading by example. So this overlaps with coaching again. We're working with the client in terms of actually making it happen and keeping up their momentum. And as a coach, we role model and that in turn sets the client up. They're a role model and making it happen too. So I love the overlap with these two. Let's keep going. In, uh, back to uh, doing some research and finding some more information here. So here's one, Dr. Phil, the way to get started is to recognize what's really important to you. Okay, think about it. We do the exact same thing in coaching. We explore who they are, um, what matters to them, what counts, and we do talk about their strategy. Awesomeish.com. That was a new one for me. Hadn't been to that website. 
And here's what they said. It, it simply makes sense. You set yourself up for success. It's by exploring and really defining and, and thinking through and planning ahead, setting up the strategies and the action plans. And then your mindset is important. I love that they said, own your goal because coaching truly is about having that person own their own goal. And it does change worldview because we challenge their thinking and expand their thinking. So the different perspectives. Tinybuddha.com said for creating meaningful change, number one, get very clear on your own values and motivations for this change. Totally makes sense. Fits with what we talk about. They said prepare a comeback. That was interesting. To me, that fits with what we say. What are the potential barriers or obstacles and how are you going to move past them? Seek out supporters. We talk about resources and we talk about who the people are in their network. Filter your updates. I thought this is very, very interesting. Think about it. Sometimes we get positive feedback. Sometimes we get negative. Both are helpful. And we also want to be very aware of making sure it isn't dragging us down and derailing us. So that's where filtering your updates comes in. Being a resource, because when we're a resource for others, it expands what the opportunities are overall. Um, again, makes sense. Pushing through it, that's one of the reasons coaches are so powerful. So if you look at the, the perspective from each side, how can you enhance the results? So for a coach, obviously it's learning the coaching skills and competencies because it's a very unique skill set. It means learning the code of ethics for being a coach. And then of course, having your coaching process. From a client perspective to create change, it's about the attitude, the the who and the why uh, in terms of what's behind wanting this change. It's thinking through and planning their actions. And then of course, the accountability along the way. So if we dig into the coaching side of it for creating change, how can you enhance results? So let's go further. Uh, first off, it's about being intentional. If I'm going to coach somebody before I start coaching them, learning the skill set, uh, understanding the code of ethics. And then of course, this is huge, the agreement. So when we talk about coaching, the agreement has multiple elements. It's how we have the conversation before we start. It's the written agreement. And then most significantly, every single time we're having a conversation, the agreement in terms of what the client wants to get out of the conversation. During the coaching, it's about truly being present to who the client is, how they're thinking, how they're processing, what's going on so that we understand both the content and the context. Uh, and that supports asking them questions that move them forward, really exploring the client priorities and plan. And then of course, when we finish a coaching engagement, it's setting the client up with their long-term strategies. How are they going to maintain what they've gained and build on it after coaching? What does this also take? It takes being confident, being confident in yourself as a coach. You've got the training, you've got the experience, you've got the ability, you've got the process and actually being confident in the coaching process itself. It's so interesting. One of the biggest challenges we all have when we first start in coaching is we this mistaken idea that it's helpful for us to give somebody else the answer and <laughs> to tell them what to do. And the reality is the coaching process is what's helpful. It's where we put them in charge of finding their own solution because that's when they own it and that's when they follow through. That's how coaching has the ROI it has. It means really being true to your role and being that coach. What are some specific tips in regards to that? Well, on the preparation side, of course, training on your coaching competencies, your ethics and agreement, that's your foundation. Then in the coaching relationship itself in the sessions, focusing completely on the client. And this is where coaching is different and unique. So instead of being in our own head, it's really about being with the client. 
and what's going on in their head. Planning. Plan how you're going to work together in that coaching relationship and plan the process for the client. What works for them in terms of maximizing uh, the effectiveness, the efficiency, the outcome, and partnering, truly partnering with them to support them as they develop strategies, define their actions, and also be there as their accountability partner. So coaching itself takes us there in supporting people to create that change. And the biggest difference is it's empowering them to decide on and own the change and own making it happen. So if you think coaching competencies in relationship to this, it all flows, it all fits. So one of the coaching competencies, we've got 11. So the first one is ethics, having our code of ethics. And the most significant thing about our code of ethics in terms of creating meaningful change is the confidentiality. Because if that individual is going to really explore and talk through and think about what it is and what the reasons are, the motivators, uh, the barriers, and how they're going to move forward, they've got to trust that this conversation is confidential and it stays between them and their coach. That gives them the freedom to truly do that big picture thinking, to do that deep exploration and very, very important. The agreement, setting up that agreement and every single conversation, it's the client's choice what the discussion is going to be about and how we're going to have the discussion. So truly giving them that, making sure in terms of trust and intimacy that we maintain it. We're creating that safe and open space for them. I think an important addition to that is that we truly trust in our clients, trust in their abilities, in, in their capacity for making it happen. Because when we trust in them, it helps them trust in themselves and it supports them moving forward. Presence. I love from our competency handout how it talks about dance in the moment. That language is so much fun and it's so significant. Truly, whatever it is in that moment and dancing in that moment with them. The listening that we do as a coach is very, very deep. And what's so great about it is in a conversation, when we hear them use certain words, we can ask about it. When we hear energy shift, we can ask about it. And that deepens their awareness and their learning, which in turn supports them creating the change. The questions that we ask, for those of you that have done coach training, they're so completely different than any other type of question. And most important in terms of coaching questions, they're very short and simple and they're open-ended, truly open to whatever the possibilities are. The language that we use as coaches, we joke about this. It's a whole new language, being very clear and direct. That means succinct and respectful in the conversations that we're having. Creating awareness, that happens through exploration. Think about it. If we simply say to somebody, here's the change, go do it, and here's how to do it, yeah, you don't have the buy-in. It helps when they have awareness, now go even bigger. If that awareness is opened up, that gets them figuring out what is important to them about the change and how they want to move forward effectively back to really having that ownership because for them, <laughs> they get it. And that's significant. Designing actions. When people decide on their own action steps, they're more likely to take them and follow through with them. And if there's a glitch along the way, they're more likely to figure out how to move past it. Planning and goal setting involves elements all the way through this process from planning how we're going to have the conversation, setting the goal for the conversation itself to the overarching plan and goal for the individual client. And all the way through, 
we're empowering their engagement in what it is. And then, of course, managing progress and accountability. And that includes celebrating progress and accountability. So our coaching competencies themselves support creating change. To further build on that with some examples, I'm going to share some questions to ask. And here's what I'm going to ask all of you. Start typing in questions you think are great coaching questions to be asking clients who want to create meaningful change. So I've got a few I'll share. Hopefully you're thinking and starting to type already or getting ready to raise your hand to share a coaching question. Let's hear some and really explore that. So as you're thinking, and as I said, hopefully typing, I'm, I'm hinting there's lots of you here and I'm, uh, I'm looking for input in that question panel or a hand up. I'll get you started with a few and look for input from you. So coaching questions that speak to what we're talking about here is asking, what are the reasons for change? Okay, and here's a great question. Uh, what does your success look like, feel like, sound like, taste like? Absolutely. That's having them truly create that vision. That's a great question. Thanks for that, Doug. All right. What are the reasons for change? Here's another fun one. What are the reasons to not change? I think that's a great one when people are stuck. Uh, oh, Tim, that's awesome. Your question is so similar. He, he put in, what would happen if you did not take action? And exploring that. Love it. So we're, we're on the same wavelength with those. So good, good, good. Here's another one. Who are your stakeholders? This is a fun question because oftentimes we forget to really think this through. Hey, if I'm going to change something, it's going to affect colleagues. It's going to affect a boss or a direct report. It's going to affect family members. It's going to affect friends because I'm going through this change. And being aware of that, who are the stakeholders? Uh, let's see, more good questions coming in. Marta said, what are the benefits of the change? That's a great question. Really digs into you, their motivation for doing it, the, the reason behind it, the why. So that's awesome. Uh, Doug's got another good one. What are the barriers to your change? Absolutely. Because identifying what might get in the way is an opportunity to identify how to move past those barriers. Keep them coming. These are good. Here's another one. What are your resources? And when we talk about resources, we're exploring people. We're exploring skill sets. We're exploring logistical resources, tools, etc. So this is oh, awesome, awesome. Um, so I got another question here. Leaders often look to change management people as experts, and they often look to us to provide the answers. How do we get around that? Oh, I love that, Deborah. We get that in coaching as well, because what happens is people hire a coach and they think the coaches mistakenly think the coach is there to tell them all the answers. <laughs> and as we learn in coach training, that's literally the opposite of what we do. So we often are in that position of having the very same conversation. And one way to do it is ask them about a time when they did have an expert come in and give them the answer and the solution. And what was the follow through? And then ask them, okay, so consider this. You're the one in this role, in this position, working with the people around you and driving this change. So you've got a choice. You can have me come in and tell you what to do and how to do it. And you may or may not agree with what I say, or I can support you on a process where you have drawn your own expertise and your own knowledge of the circumstances and figure out your own answer because you do have the answer inside you. And when you have the answer and it comes from you, the ownership is completely different and you get the follow through. 
And so literally talking through the very thing you're asking about, what happens if I just give you the answer versus you figuring out your own answer and how is that different? Um, and Lorraine is asking what questions to ask using the word C. So it totally depends on the individual client. So if that client is primarily visual in their functioning and thinking, C questions are great. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to put them in a, a certain circumstance. Uh, when you are in the process of making this change happen, what will you see occurring around you? Or paint a picture of the process is another way to do it. Quite simply, you can say, put yourself in this circumstance with these things occurring. Describe what you see around you. And so there are different ways to ask it. Uh, other words that, that relate to see are, what do you imagine? What do you visualize? Uh, those help too. Okay, so you got the thank you. So that was helpful for you. Good, awesome. So back into our questions, everyone. Keep thinking. Um, oh, good, Renee, you sent in a great one. She said, what is the price you are willing to pay to achieve your goal? Oh, what a fun question. And it can go in a lot of different directions. Some of us may hone in first on that word price, and it may be more, I'm guessing it is, than just an actual money amount. It's really about time and energy and effort, uh, thought power. <laughs> so that's awesome. Good question. Love it. These are awesome. Uh, let's see. Let me give you another one. Uh, similar to that, what is your level of commitment? Um, I've heard coaches ask on a scale of one to 10, where are you at in terms of prioritizing this or in terms of uh, importance or significance or urgency, uh, depending on what it is, and literally asking them where they're at, how they're ranking it. That's another good one. Keep them coming, everyone. A few more questions here. This is awesome. I've got one more for you. How do you want to manage accountability? And having the client tell me. And then if something isn't working, coming back to how do you want me to hold you accountable on that? Because truly it's the client telling us how we serve as their accountability partner. Um, all right, so I've got a question here, Deborah. Wow, this is a great one. It feels like we can explore this. How do you be honest and forthright without offending your client? And to me, it's about how we say what we say. So in coach training, we talk about language and our word choice. We talk about how we phrase what we say. We talk about how we phrase our questions. And I'm guessing it's very similar for you. Deborah, let me say this. I've got a few quick resources to share with everyone. I am happy to stay on afterwards if you want and bring you on live and we can actually talk because there's a lot more context behind that question that I don't have. And if you want, we can even role play a conversation where you be the customer, the client, and I'll be you and, and we'll have the conversation. So giving you that option if you want to hang around afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, recognizing that we've got just uh, two minutes left in terms of our time, very quickly share with you your resources. Many of you are familiar, for some this is new, the International Coach Federation, the Center for Coaching Solutions, and then the Center for Coaching Certification. So the International Coach Federation website is at coachfederation.org. Lots of great information there, and they have a research portal that you can access. Center for Coaching Certification for your coach training. And then Center for Coaching Solutions, uh, a resource in terms of support for uh, coaching programs, support for developing them, managing them, and then also providing coaches. On top of that, uh, the blogs that come out, the books, the webinars, etc. I'll dig into those. So the coaching blog is at coachingblog.coachcert.com. Each year we publish a new book. Graduates of the program 
are the authors of the different chapters in these books. So you have a tremendous amount of expertise. Um, and every single book is completely different. Every single chapter is completely different. So great opportunity there. And then, of course, these free webinars we do each month. We are available to you for a quick call or email if you want to check in. Uh, and then, of course, we outsource in terms of the coaching, consulting to help you get a program up and running, training for coaches, and doing the coaching. Those of you that have invested your time here, I do want to give you back the time. So if you want to schedule time, you're going to have that option for yourself. It's about choosing resources that make sense for you, planning your own process, implementing your strategy, and achieving your results. As I said, I'm going to hang around. I know a few of you have typed in your thanks already, and some of you have got to go. <laughs> so thank you for that. I'm glad this was helpful and informative for you. Definitely appreciate all of you being here, and we are here uh, to support you in your process. So thank you, everyone. And uh, Deborah, I see your thanks along with a number of other people. Deborah, if you do want to come on live and do a role play, raise your hand. Let me know. I'm unsure what your schedule is and whether or not you have time. <laughs> so, um, or you can type in. Uh, okay, I'm seeing you raise your hand. So hopefully you've got that mic working. Hi, Deborah, are you live? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I sure can. Awesome. So it sounds like oh, you're a client and you want to have this conversation with them and you want to figure out how to manage the conversation. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, I did. I'll, 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 um, I'll be transparent. I won't name the client or the company or anything. I did a series of focus groups around some employee engagement survey feedback. And what came clear through... Um, some of the changes in the operating model he was trying to institute was that his communications were sugar-coated and he wrote them all himself mm. and it was really hard without offending him to give him that feedback and i didn't do it well and i think i alienated him okay Okay, so a couple of thoughts uh, come up. One is if you are getting feedback, having a format in which you can distill the feedback and give it to them in a way that doesn't um, <laughs> let them know who gave what feedback. Very similarly right. is the idea of a 360 and inviting them to do a 360. Now, given oh. where... You where you're at with this particular client, we can role play a conversation and we can take it one of two ways. We can do the conversation where you gave the feedback and I can be you and you can be them, or we can do a conversation, okay, you already had that conversation, what do you do now? What's gonna be most helpful to you? I think, I think I've already had that conversation, what do I do now? Okay, so you're gonna be that person and I'll be you. My first question is, how do we set up this conversation to make it happen? Is it something where you're, you simply reach out and say, hey, let's schedule some time to talk and follow up and, and explore next steps? Yeah, I think he, he was expecting me to come in and give him the feedback. So there, I, I, I think the way you, you, coach, you, you, you just coached me was, was excellent because it wasn't formal and it wasn't informal. It was sort of like, right on the mark between the two. Okay. So now you're going to schedule a follow-up conversation, correct? Yes. Okay. So let's say we're doing that follow-up conversation and I'm you and you're going to put yourself in that person's shoes. And so I'll come on and I'll say, hi, Deborah, how are you doing? And then I'll say, so we talked about a number of things last time we met. What are you thinking uh, or feeling in regards to that conversation? Ah, good question. Okay. So if you're that person, what's your response? He can, he can be very honest with me and say, I was, I work hard on my own communications. I'm transparent. I believe they're sincere and, um, I find it hard to accept that people don't think that I'm honest and that they're circuit coded. Okay. Okay. So you know what? That totally makes sense. You work hard. 
you feel like your communication is good and effective and that you're transparent. Now, given that this feedback did come in and, and that's where it's at, the question now is what kind of feedback do you want it to be if we do this again in the future? That's a really good question. I've thought about this a hundred times. How could I have done this differently? That wouldn't have been such a um, hit on the head for him, you know? Um, uh, I, 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 I think I could have approached it in a, um, a, framed it first more positively, that employees appreciate that he writes his own co communications. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and they like the sort of the twists and turns that he gives to them. Mm. And, and what they would like to see though, is have you come across a little bit more directly rather than say super coded. Yeah, which in turn gives you the next question for him. How do you wanna come across more directly? Ah, okay. So, so those are examples of some of the questions and that's using that coaching approach. And what you said, Deborah, you're hitting it right on the head. It's about okay. that forward, proactive, positive. And you even said that word positive. That's how coaching supports having those kinds of conversations. Okay. Okay. That was excellent. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Deborah, I'll go ahead and mute you again. If there is someone else that does want to come on, we still have some people here. If you have additional questions, type them in, raise your hand, whatever it is you want. Um, and what I'm getting, by the way, is I'm getting people saying thank you. So I'm glad this was helpful. Uh, yes, we used up our time. I will get out an email to you with a link to the recording. And in addition to that, in the email, it'll let you know, hey, if you do want to schedule a 30-minute conversation, let me know, and I'll give you a link to my calendar for doing that. So definitely appreciate seeing all of you here. Hope, uh, hope you make it a great rest of your day and hope we stay in touch. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks, everyone.